She's appeared on the Larry King podcast. <laughs> She's been on Jimmy Kimmel. And now it's all led to this, the savage situation. This Trixie is my moment. Mattel. This is it. Oh, that, thank you for having me <laughs> it's in a this, pleasure. Um, what would you call this, a padded room? I th it, we, we made sure to pad it. We, we knew we were coming in. So we thought we'd put this up just in case anything kicks off. I thought it was really considerate of you to ask me last night in the evening to come and drag today. I really pulled it together you, well, didn't you I? You look fabulous, like amazing, like fabulous. Thank you. Like I had a gorge. gig last night here in London at the club until 3 a.m. And I slept uh, for three hours in drag and woke up and came here. And look at you, you look amazing. I've had makeup on since yesterday. Does That's it dark sided? But does it is it is it easy to top up, or is it something that you have to kind of like really kind of start from the beginning and get back into? To be honest, I wiped the lips Trixie. off and then I went to sleep without the lashes of the wig on, and I woke up and looked in the mirror. I was like, this stayed pretty well. Yeah, I mean, it's a testament to how much makeup I wear. Yeah, that I can literally go into my REM cycle and come out looking the same. Do you get through a, a lot of makeup? Like, is it is there, is there just is it everywhere? Or is it or is it? Do you, are you quite conservative with it? No, there's a lot of stuff I go through quickly. So stuff like eyeshadows and stuff, it's kind of takes a while. But like my stuff, I use every day, like foundation, lash glue, black eyeliner. So like all the black eyeliner you see, that's yeah. every day. So I go through the pots of black eyeliner really fast. Gosh, and the dress as well. I love that. Thank you. The you shoes. know, I've been very inspired by um like a. Uh, what is it, Cambry Street, like London mod? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Fashion movement. Yeah, it, like Austin you do. Powers. Yeah. It's very and 60s kind yes. of like, yeah. And it's a lot of black and white, like textured blocking and like wallpaper prints. Um, I like have been living in the 60s now. Because I, you know, I did my first two records were country and folk. And now my new sound is more like, um, it's more be like British Invasion. So yeah. I've been getting very into like, uh, there's this Barbie doll named Francie who was supposed to be Barbie's mod cousin from London, and all of her looks are like these chic little tube dresses. <laughs> I'm very into that. Because you, because obviously Trixie Mattel, Mattel make Barbie, right? So exactly. They, this, this, that was the inspiration behind the, the name. Were you a big Barbie fan growing huge up? Huge fan. Okay. Uh, yeah, huge fan. I just did a thing with my mom, and I was like, "What do you remember about me being young?" She was like, "You just always love Barbie. That's it. That's kind of what she was." There, was there one favorite Barbie? Was it like a fate, like the best one? Did well, you collect them as well? I was born in 89, so I grew up around, like, from 90 to 95 were the years when Barbie was in the store. And all the – she kind of had the big curly hair that was almost, you know, this big. And every, she was very tan with big blue eye makeup and, like, um, white blonde hair. It was very 90s. Barbie was very extreme. And I just thought she was perfect. She yeah. just was everything to me. And if you think of dolls and drag, it's so similar because – in drag, the whole spirit of it is you are what you're dressed as. Yeah. You know, even though out of drag, I'm bully Elmer Fudd. This is what you see now. <laughs> but like with dolls, it's the same plastic in the same mold, but she's a nurse because she's wearing a coat. She's a cop because she, she has a you know badge. Like it's it's sort of like drag where whatever you're dressed as, that's what you are. Yeah. I love dolls. Yeah. You look amazing. Oh, thank I you. Love, I, 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 I'm, I'm Isn't blown it away. almost distracting? It is. I, it's, it, I'm mesmerized. If anything, I'm actually mesmerized. That's right it. now. But, um, and then, oh, this is the tea. We just flew in from LA yesterday, and I forgot my lashes. Oh and no! Normally, I wear ten to fifteen stacked pairs of three hundred one lashes, which are like pretty long. Does it get heavy? On, yes. On your, okay. So yesterday at about eleven thirty, before I had to go to the club, we went. Oh my god, we have no lashes, and I had to take a black piece of paper and cut it into strips, and that's what I have on my eyes today. You're wearing these are pieces of paper. No, I'm wearing no. paper on my eyes. I, it's not my favorite look, but it worked because I don't have any lashes. And it, I couldn't go without lashes. Every paper manufacturer watching, which is probably four of them, I don't know, is now thinking, <laughs> we need to get in touch with Trixie. You'd be amazed how <clears> products <throat> are not drag products, but we use them like Elmer's glue stick, the purple one. Drag queens use that to cover their eyebrows. And even though that we live on it, they've never made like, I'm surprised Elmer's glue, Elmer's glue has never done like a Pride Month video showing people to glue, glue their brows down. I think it's because it's a kid's product and they don't want to you know, show yeah. the cross-dressers. However, Mattel just came out with a doll that's um, gender non, like, uh, binary. Okay. It's a doll that comes with, like, a male and female wigs, male and female clothing. So that's cool. Yeah, that is cool. That's really cool. Um, you're in London, and you, you've you been here many times. Like, you, you're, oh a big, you're a big fan. You, you, you've seen... Have you seen much of the city, though? You always like hotel rooms. You actually get a chance to explore? I can tell you what the airport and the hotels are in every city, and that's about it. Okay. Because Shredding and Drag is such a drama. Yeah. And also, I'm not real famous, but I am too famous to go out anywhere gay. So I can't go to, like, you know, gay bars, <laughs> the Apple Store, Forever 21, Primark, you know, <laughs> any of the gay hotspots. Yeah. Primark is big. Yeah. For the gay community, they you love know, it. 
If I try to get a vegan sausage roll from Greg's, spotted. Oh, my, oh, I've not had one yet. They're fucking gross. Are they? Anybody <laughs> who tells you that they're good, do you think? No, there was a lot of hype when they came out. Everyone was going nuts. Well, Mama, nuts for these vegan things. A little gray turd wrapped yeah. in wet bread. Yeah. And it's all today. greasy and gets you think it's disgusting. <laughs> it's sick. It sick. I mean, thank you, Greg's, for making a vegan product, but it's not good. Yeah, it's not good. It doesn't <laughs> look good. I was on tour in the spring with my show Skinny Legend. That's now on um it's now on iTunes. And you, and it's doing bloody well, right? It's doing really, really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in the States it's like the number fifty two movie on iTunes and uh it's like the number twenty three. It's like the number 25 in the comedy charts. So, so cool. That's I paid for amazing. that whole special myself, so I'm happy it's doing well because oh, yeah, if exactly. you're a drag queen uh, not making money on your projects. Because, uh, I mean, like, I mentioned you, you've got so many strings to your bow. I, I don't know when you get time to do anything. I'm uh, an when do you breathe? What? I slept in drag. What does that tell you about how I manage my time? You're a hard working <laughs> I, person. I, I, it was such a weird experience to like, you know, I sleep hanging oh, from the like ceiling, a <laughs> open my eyes. <laughs> Like open my wings and be like, oh right, I'm in drag. Yeah, it's kind of easy though. Like I'm not gonna lie, I might do it again. And my facial hair doesn't grow in very thick. Yeah. So um, I'll probably I'm probably good till like 4 p.m. Okay. You look, um, you look good. I don't manage my time very well because mm -hmm. I try to do everything. So like right now, I'm working on writing my next show, uh, Grown Up, which is touring the Europe and the UK. Mm -hmm. I'm writing my book, A Guide to Womanhood with Trixie and Katya. Amazing. I'm working on my next album, Barbara. And then I'm working on um, some YouTube uh, product, uh, YouTube videos for my beauty line. Plus, we constantly are in develop of development of new beauty products. I'm on the phone screaming with, at a lab every two days. And this is Trixie Cosmetics, right? Trixie Cosmetics. Okay. We have some. We have stuff coming out through the next year. Cosmetics takes so long to make. It's like you're working on a product 18 months before it comes out. So like, just it's a long. But you can't time. wait to finally see it. On you, the shelves. Yeah, because the whole process. I mean, stuff you never even thought of. I used to work at makeup counters, and I thought I knew everything about selling makeup. When you're the one making it, you have to worry about uh, the color, the scent, the packaging, the FDA regulations on, like, the ingredients and all that. Is oh, my it safe? God. There's so much. And then so you have to test to the product through. for color, formula, you know, shade, finish. You have to worry about the name. How are you going to sell it? It's crazy. It is crazy. And but it makes you think, like, Revlon and L'Oreal and stuff, they've got it all figured out. But these independent brands... They really, it takes a lot of people a long time to make one little product. It's amazing. But you get a great opportunity to showcase your makeup all the time. Totally. There you go. And every single product we've put out, I love. I mean, when Stacey Lipstick came out, it's perfect. It's perfect because I put all the work into it. Is it is it makeup that I could wear too? Do you think I could, I mean, is it kind of, is there any male, a male line? There should be. Yeah, you can put whatever you want on. A bit I mean, guy liner. Bit of, guy liner. That, have you heard that? Well, I'm a guy and I have eyeliner on, so this might do. technically be guy liner. No. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here. Do you ever do like a Pete Wentz fantasy, like a little tight line, little smoky? I've thought about it a lot, just to add a bit of bit, bit of uh, gravitas to my face. I think it's cool when people do it. Do you think I should do it? One day, yeah. I'll do it. So, uh, um, you know, originally the only people who wore makeup were movie stars, and people, normal people, started wearing makeup to be like movie stars. Yeah, that's how women started. So I think a hundred years into the future, men will wear makeup and no one will think about it. If I've got more like, deodorant, if I've got some some acne or like a or like a, a spot, something, I'll always put like a bit of concealer or something on. Why not? Well, because you're on camera talent and you're not afraid. Yeah, a lot of it. people Thanks. are very Thanks, weird Trixie. about it. Do you think? I, I don't know. Is it change? Is that changing though? I think people, I don't know. If people are now more open and willing. Like you know, I don't everyone know. use everyone uses things like um like Vaseline things for their lips and things now. It's yeah, the same yeah, thing. Same thing. Put the powder on, Mary. Yeah, exactly. Put the paint on. I used to work at the Mac counter in Milwaukee, and this guy used to come in, and he was always interviewing for jobs, and he had one of those face tattoos of a tear, which I think means you've killed someone. I think it does. And so he used to have me cover it for him before the interviews, and then I would think, well, what if you get it? What if you get the job? <laughs> you better come back here and buy this $16 pot of concealer. Yeah, exactly. That's a bit of a weird thing, isn't it? Is it true because you've lost someone or because you've killed someone? I thought when you kill people, you don't want people to find out. Exactly. It's very much like I'm guilty, written, like, drawn <laughs> yes. on your face. You may as well have like a tattoo that says the body's uh, buried on Hollywood and Vine. You know, <laughs> It's in the lake. Yes. <laughs> Um, it's strange, but um, London is uh, obviously a uh, you know a place that you love coming to. A hotbed. You you were here uh, with your stand up this year, right? Back I in, sure was. And you were at the Brixton Academy, was it? I think it was. I think it was yes. O2 Brixton this year. Okay. Last year I did the Grand Clapham. Good old Grand Good old Clapham. 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 Do you, are the British fans here like? Do, I mean, they are they are absolutely love you. I tell you what really the do. British people like. Tell me, they love cosmetics. They love blue ball cuts. Male, adult male bowl cuts. Bowl and cuts. Straight across bangs. Like, like, like just boy a, band haircuts here. Like Nick Carter. Yes, they the, love they it. They love a Nick Carter. They love it. They do. And they also love um they love uh hair glitter, body glitter, um, slutty outfits, 
like I think in the UK people are much more empowered to dress however they want. Yeah. And also um in the states it takes a long time for a trend. We learned about this in cosmetics. In the states it takes a long time for a trend to catch on. Like Somebody like the Kardashians has to do something very publicly for a while for people to start doing it. Mm -hmm. Whereas like here, people will see a makeup thing on Euphoria and like shop for that product overnight and be wearing it at the club the next night. Yeah. People here are like turn it and burn it with trend. Yeah. It, um, it, it does. It does. One thing I've always been fascinated about with, with, with the American fashion and the culture there, you always see a lot of guys wearing shirts with like a, a white t-shirt underneath. Always. Yeah. Like it's a normal thing. To, we would never do that here. And Don't people do like American themed parties where like people drink out of red cups? Yeah, we love it. The, Ameri is... the American pie world. Do you remember American pie? I That's do. What it's about, you know, drinking like you know, some 41s on in the background. You kind of don't. I don't want to waste my Exactly. Time. A bit of Foo Fighters, you know, uh, that's great. Some 41 was fabulous. One, one weird thing we have in, in, the, in the UK as well is we love, we love the idea of a diner, right? You know, diners, like, you know, like a Denny's or like something really oh, kind sure. of, you know, we love going to a booth and ordering like like chili on fries. Like, like and a just, milkshake and, just, and a burger. Yeah. We, we, for us, that's like a really kooky thing that we can do in the US. Or like a stack of pancakes, like an IHOP. Man, we love it. I don't know why. It's weird. <laughs> it's really, it's, it's strange. I don't know why. Well, the uh, the only kind of cultural thing I do when I'm here is get um, hungover. Yeah. We do love to booze. People here are wild. I remember my first time here. I performed at the Black Cap like five years ago with Meth. You know that drag queen Meth? Mm -hmm. Her name's Meth, but, you know, not pro-Meth. Um, <laughs> this is in Florida. Yeah. Um, but uh, she, I used to go and I remember like she sat down with like a hot teapot of like hot lemon vodka. And I was like, what? What are we doing here hot today? Hot lemon vodka. The, I've had the hangovers of my life in this country. You're welcome. But you people know. here love comedy. This is also, this is the country where I regularly throw people out of my shows. For, for what? For doing what? Because I'm doing stand-up and playing an acoustic guitar and they get blackout drunk and throw them out. Are they shouting things, singing along? Are they uh, what, just what? yelling, just yelling like, love you, mom, whatever, like in the middle of it. And then I ask them to be quiet and they don't stop and then I have to throw them out. On behalf of the British people, I'm so sorry. People are they, wild. They really, we're, we're weird people. We're all very strange. We're, we're a mixed bag. We really are a melting pot of people. Yeah. Some are completely like crackers. I've lost the plot. Like bonkers. Oh, Mad. yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant crackers, like white people. Like, <laughs> I yeah, saw your face literally thinking, what are you talking about? There is a lot of white people here. There is a lot of white people. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, a lot of white people. But you know what, somebody, when I go to other countries and I comment on the fact that it's all white people, they go, yeah, because we didn't take slaves. And then I'm like, oh, you're right. America is wonderfully diverse, but part of it's because, unfortunately, a lot of people were brought there against their will. This is true. This is true. Although, you know, the British Empire, we used to have like Australia and all the different places. We used to have like it was a giant prison thing. So we had, we had some weird colony. things going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had some very strange stuff. Our history is a bit bleak. Well, have you, I mean, have you been to things like here, like the Tower of London and been to like have you, King's Queens, that kind of stuff? You saw Buckingham Palace, right? The, this morning. Yeah. Okay. It's just cool. It's fine. It's, it's a, a building. It's a, it's a building. You know, um, it's just. It's cool. It's whatever. There's right? a, um, a wax figure of uh, Prince Harry in Los Angeles. Re a wa why? He's at the Wax Museum. Okay. Prince Harry. Is he the with redheaded one? Yeah. yeah tall. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I guess tall. Like he's sm is he the smoking hot one? I think he, Will's. Will, Will's. <laughs> he wrote my life. Everyone's like, like yeah, 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 he's, yeah. What he's, if you were like, well, he's here right now? And our special guest. Uh, yeah. He, you know, he's, yeah, the Meghan Markle um, prince. One well, that's married to her. Sure. Yeah, that one. I mean, we, we, we do love our royal family here. We're, we're big fans. Yeah, that's your. Car well, unfortunately, in the States, I think the closest thing we have is like the Kardashians, and that's kind of bleak. That is quite bleak. They, they, uh, they're an interesting family, aren't they? The Kardashians. Yeah, I mean, I don't really pay attention to a lot of stuff. I never know who anyone is. You know what's great about me being a famous person? Go on. I never know who anybody is, so I never get nervous at anything. Do people always come up to you? They're and like, do you know who that was? You? I'm like, no. Melvin, who? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Melvin. Yeah, I never know who anybody is. But then my boyfriend is very uh, savvy, so he'll be like, don't you know who that is? That's that person. I'm like, okay. Yeah. It's 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 hard. I know I know exactly what you mean. But do you do you find that as, as you've gotten more more popular, more famous, um, has life gotten easier? Like do people kind of get, you know always kind of like you know, whatever you need. My should, life is incredibly easy. Is it really? Yes. Just, anybody who tells you that like money and acknowledgments have made their life harder has lost touch with what it was like to be poor. <laughs> Seriously, okay. yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with then you. Then again, I, I slept imagine. in drag, and I'm wearing paper on my eyes. Yeah, so I do keep it very highbrow, lowbrow. Yeah, your, your, like, root, your roots are the other. <laughs> Literally, I'm in like six hundred dollars of hair, but I'm also in paper eyelashes. Yeah, but you're, you're humble. You're, you're, the roots are there. You know, you don't forget where you came from. No, I like that. 
Um, part of being a drag queen, I think, is uh, from the beginning, you have to figure it all out yourself. You have to make your own mixes, uh, make your own show posters, uh, make your own hair, uh, do your own makeup, do your own costumes. From the beginning, you're having to do it all yourself. Whereas, like, when I work in L.A. and I'm working with, like, I don't know, normal celebrities, it's an entire posse for someone to do anything. So when I work on a normal TV show where I'm a guest and someone else is a guest, mm -hmm. I'm there myself doing my own hair and makeup with my own costume, with my own everything. And then it's like some rando, not rando, but like it doesn't matter whatever level celebrity. If it's a straight person, there's like a wardrobe person, hair, makeup, someone writing their jokes. Like a whole team. Oh, my like God. For them. An entire team. There was a show I was on once, and I don't want to say what it was because it was TRL, but I was on TRL. <laughs> and it was like – and there was the entire cast of All Stars 3 – and they were like, no assistance and no one else in the dressing room. And you guys can't bring any luggage. There's no space for it. And then down the hall, I remember Darren and Chris had like 20 people in there to do what? Coma's bangs? <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny because like so many, uh, there's a few of us drag queens, thankfully me included, who've really gotten to be like the first to do a lot of things. Yeah. But no matter how close you get to it, you are still stuck under pink plexiglass. Like, oh, right, I'm subhuman, you know. Do you think that's ever going to change? Is, is, are no. you seeing a change? No? Of course not. But then again, you know what? You dress like a clown, you get treated like a clown. You dress like a clown. I saw some um, mascots downstairs dressed as cats. Y yes. And I've never felt like like representation matters. I was yeah. like, oh, hey. Hey. I'm here too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's talk about um, something that I'm I'm very excited to, to get you on to talk about as well because I know that you are a massive gamer. I and, thought you were going to talk about my naked and you're, body. <laughs> you're what? Do you like knee socks? Look I at, love knee socks. I have foundation on my hands and look at I just rub my legs and they're brown now. But um. they I I used to work at Disney World long, a long time ago and I used to have to wear white stockings every day to work. What did you play? I was in. You, have you been to Epcot at Disney World? Have yeah. Been, so I used to be working at the Rose and Crown, where like you have there on the lagoon, like the restaurant. And we used to have like blue bell bottoms, white stockings, very British. Obviously. You lived in Florida. I lived in Florida. Yeah. I see that for you. You love Florida, right? Bitch, fuck Florida. <laughs> Florida is rotten. Anybody from Florida, fight me. But you know what? Talk to anybody from Florida, and they're like, oh yeah. You know, in the states, they have yeah. that game where you put your birthday in Google and you add Florida man, and a news article will come up like. My birthday, August 23rd, Florida man shoots wife and, and no, fucks an no ass like an alligator. That is a thing. Yes. Okay. Florida is that. wild. So type in my birthday and just type Florida man. Yeah, and it'll come up like, Florida man outruns police and crashes through a Denny's. Like, <laughs> yes. Florida or I'm crazy. probably sitting eating pancakes because I love it. Yes. You see? That's exactly right. Sorry, you want to talk about video games? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you... you You've said a lot like that you love gaming. You're a big time gamer. You have like since you since you were a kid. Did, did it start when you were like really small or when did you uh, find first yeah, games? Yeah, I mean, I, in the womb, really. No, uh, I can't, <laughs> gaming well, I, in the womb. We were poor. Okay. But we kind of like always had whatever current system like two years later. Like I think my first system I recall having was original Nintendo system. And then I had Sega Genesis. And then I had N64. And then I think I had nothing for a while. And then in college, I got a PS3. You were really it, bouncing around the, the different consoles yeah. there. Wow, okay. And then PS4, and then I still have, I have three PS4s right now. Why do you need three? It's complex. I okay. had the original PS4, and then I got the PS4 Pro. Okay. And then one time I was on tour, and I regretted not bringing my PS4, and I bought another one. Wow. Do you have, not like, relatable. ones that work in both the US and, and Europe as well? Like, the adapters and everything? And like, yes. Are you there with, like, leads plugging things in, like... That'll work there. Yes, use like that my Scarlet lead and that. I have a white PS4 Pro that I got in Australia, so that one has an Australian plug. Okay. So you had all these different systems growing up. You had you you travel with these different consoles. What kind of games were you playing when you first? Like you said, the NES. I mean, what kind of games? I mean, I remember Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles were some great games. Yeah. Back uh, then, there was this one game I loved as a kid. Do you remember uh, Monsters in My Pocket? I oh <laughs> oh my god yeah I used to collect them and they were amazing. Monsters in My Pocket was fierce. Um, obviously, Le Legend of Zelda, but their yeah. original game is quite hard. You it really is have hard to play it in like one sitting, kind of. Yeah, it's um, tricky. I loved Mario, of course. Duck yeah. Hunt. Um, oh, I didn't remember the Nintendo Zapper. Was that what it was called? The Nintendo? I don't know what it was called. The gun. That was pretty good. Yeah, the gun. Um, that, that's kind of what I played as a kid. And then I remember we got a Sega Genesis, and that was like a, a boom bitch game on the sequel because it was like um, Sonic. Mortal Kombat. I loved Mortal yeah, Kombat. Yeah, so good. Mortal Kombat 3, I believe, was the Sega Genesis title. I saw, I, you play, I saw you play it recently on you and, you and Katia's show. Um, yeah. It was, it's, it's evolved a lot. It's changed. The Terminator's in it now. It's wild It's now. wild, yeah. It's the same engine, I believe, as Injustice. Yes, it is. Because, I mean, those games are 
insane. Yeah, Warner Brothers have put a lot into like the kind of cinematic. It look, it look. I mean, it's like the game looks phenomenal, doesn't it's, it? It's the engine is so beautiful and smooth. Yeah, it is. You know what other game too? The smoothness. Those Arkham games. Yeah, the Batman ones. Yeah, the combat like. Um, it's like, fluid, right? It's, it feels really it's like so fluid. It's great. You're like, how did they make this? He really is everywhere. Did you play the Spider-Man game last year? Uh huh. That I was... didn't beat it. I I went like three quarters through and quit, which is kind of my mo with a lot of games. Yeah, but you got a feel for it. Three quarters yeah. away, you, you you knew what was going on. Did you hear the funny story about the Easter egg in that in that game? No. So, so a guy wanted to propose to his girlfriend. He wrote to the to Insomniac, the developers, right, and said, I want to propose my girlfriend in the game. Can you make it happen inside the game? So they went, okay. He never thought they'd do anything with it at all. And they said, yeah, we'll do it for you. And they on one of the, the cinema screenings somewhere in in Manhattan says um, such and such, will you? marry me right and they said we put it in the game for you and just before the game came out he then said can you get rid of it because she's actually left me for my brother i was and it's still and it's still in the when game it came out she was dead wasn't she she wasn't dead to him to yeah him. but not like not well, really maybe his brother can buy her the game yeah that's true and he's like get <laughs> rid of it and they're like no we're gonna leave it in because it's great so you can't you can't <laughs> <laughs> go that far down the road yeah you can't but what a great story for us i mean for him it sucks but for us it's it's real really funny you can't take tomorrow for granted no i mean when i'm shopping for like whatever like um you know, like men's health uh, vitamins whatever they come in like the packs of 100 or the packs of like 300 and i'm like who is so arrogant to be like yes i'm gonna live 300 more days obviously yeah yeah i could be dead by then small small packages or whatever or like you know amounts that's that's definitely the way forward yes. don't get too don't get too ahead of yourself don't get too fierce. Yeah, don't get You're too fierce. Yeah. Um, I loved Simmer uh, down. Uh, and then I, I also quit Breath of the Wild about three quarters through. It was just like too it's much. too big. Too Bitch, big. I've been playing Skyrim for like four years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When does it end? There's like nine different versions. It's just, it's, it's, do you play the mod versions or just the original kind of like I'm playing the... the Switch one. I've been playing it for okay. like two years. Okay. When does it end? I don't, I don't think it does. I think it just keeps you keeps going and going and going. How did they... I mean, I've played Fallout by Bethesda, which is similar. I've yeah. played Fallout uh, 3... Uh, New Vegas and four. Mm -hmm. New Vegas is my favorite because it's, yeah. you know, it's real Western. Yeah, it's great. That that game really created like an environment when it's like the middle of the night and you're in a desert with a gun alone and you're listening to like that old Western music on the radio. Like, yeah. They really created like a world and a texture in that game. They did. But in Skyrim, there's so many characters. Yeah. So many non-playable characters that have so many dialogue options. I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of talking. A lot of talking. Game? A lot of talking. Yeah, I hate games now that make you actively. You're not allowed to skip the cutscenes. That annoys me because I sometimes want to get through and I'll read on Wikipedia what it's about later on. I just want to play the game. Oh really? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So my off-time favorite titles are um, Resident Evil Five. I'll replay oh. that anytime. Yeah, love it. And then um, what else do I love? What are you playing on? The, you, Bioshock you... is my like all-time favorite. Oh my god, I love Bioshock so much. Oh my god, one, two, and three. I'll play any of them. Two is my fave, but uh. They're all really they good. They brought like the trilogy out, didn't they? Like a kind of like a, all of them together, like in mm -hmm. HD, PS4 Pro, goodness. Like they're, they're great games. Yes, and there's some, uh, I believe it's called Bear Let's See. There's some DLC. Um, yeah. The third one was so wild, that ending. Yeah. I had to play that game twice to even understand what was going on. Are you play, When you were playing, um, I mean, you take the Switch on the road, right? You take you have a, you have a Switch do. that you take with you. Are you playing, do you have like kind of every game? Are you kind of are you downloading things as you go? Like what kind of stuff are you playing? Usually? I have some current favorites. Right now I'm playing uh, Dream Daddy on the iPad. Do you know about this game? I, I <laughs> No, but I want to know exactly what Dream Daddy is. Okay, Dream Daddy is a dad dating simulator where you're a dad who just moved into a neighborhood and you're meeting and dating all the other dads in the neighborhood. Oh my Christ, that sounds phenomenal. I played the first three levels and now I'm like, if I continue with this, this is who I am now. So you're, you're, I'm a person who plays dating simulators. So you're trying to date all the all the dads of households in in your kind of yeah. So the dads message you and they're like, I want to let's go for a jog or whatever, and you go and you get points for each date <laughs> based on like you listen to what they're talking about and later on sort of like try to give the right answer or something they'll like. Are they are some of them married? Some of them are single? Do we know? Some are married. Some are single. Some are closeted, and they're all different shapes and sizes. One is a vampire. Holy, that is. And you know video games, they'll just drop a vampire in. They don't care. I, I'm going to download this immediately. This yeah. sounds, I mean, I, I want to play it, you know, just to kind of experience that. It's crazy. I, I mean, it's embarrassing. But uh, and what am I currently <laughs> playing? Dead by Daylight's my all-time favorite. Okay, yeah, okay. I so can play that okay. game anytime on a loop forever. Um, I'm kind of a, a Friday the 13th came out on the Switch as well. So I've been playing that again. Uh, do you like being like Jason or the killer or do you like being like another hider? I'm cool with either. I feel like with Jason, I have like, a, you have, there's a high, like, you have to really win. Yeah. There's eight campers you have to kill, I believe. So there's a lot. And they're all trying to escape. I like those asymmetrical online multiplayers because 
you've got all these weak characters against one strong character. And I like the, 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 the match changes every time because everyone has a different play style. Yeah. Some people are more cooperative. Some people are more solo. Some people, I love that. Are but you, Dead by Daylight is my favorite. Are you, are you playing with people like a friend, like a friendship circle? Is like a, like a, a drag queen gaming community? Is there kind of like, you know, you, are you playing with just random people online? How, do, how does it work for you? There's some drag queens I know that play video games, but I don't really play with them very much. Like Fifi O'Hara plays video games. There's a drag queen named Deer who plays, she's like a Twitch streamer. Mm -hmm. um, I just play with whoever, but I do have like a circle of gays on my, uh, like my Steam of like, uh, it's fun to get a few gays in a game and all with headphones on just screaming. You know, like <laughs> when you have like eight gay campers running from Jason, oh. imagine like the high pitched scream. There's a, there's, a, there's a TV series in that somewhere. There, yeah. I mean, it has to be. Or like, um, you know, people do voices or like, like gays, like Jason's like, macheting in the door and the gay is like oh my god kill me daddy you know like <laughs> we get very into it are you i mean are you are you online as trixie mattel or are you i mean how are you kind of being the full character when you're on the comms and stuff as well no um i'm off the clock most of the people i play with don't really know my day job or sometimes they figure it out yeah. like i was in a game once with this guy and he's like your voice are you trixie mattel and I, I was so gooped you can you were gooped Gooped at the page. I'm gonna yeah. use that. It's not very British. I'm gonna use that a lot. No, gooped. I was gooped in the. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's has a different meaning. I got goop yeah, in my. That, that's a. I got goop very, in my. Yeah, that's wow. That's. <laughs> I've never heard that expression, but it it, it gives it, uh, my imagination's running wild. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, yeah, I got found <laughs> out. He was like, "Are you Trixie Mattel?" And I was like, "I'm Meg Ryan." I tried to kind of like push it. <laughs> but, uh, Meg Ryan. Yeah. Okay. Most people I play with are just like uh, rando gay guys. There's one guy I play with who's 15, and I feel weird about it. Okay. Are we, are we, what's his name? I don't even know his real name. Th that, that means it's okay, right? Yeah, I don't it's know fine. where he lives. I don't know his real name. But when I found out he was 15, I was like, I don't know. Like, I'm 30. Yeah. But, I mean, you're playing games like, you know, as you said, on the Switch and things all the time. You're kind of playing with, you're playing with headsets and comms. Like, you are, you are a, a, a full-on game. I mean, you even posted yeah. recently a picture of you with... A glass of champagne here in London and a Game Boy Color, which yes! was just like that. Was, that's that. That's an that's like 2003. That was last yes. being sold. So a, that's a fan gave me a Game Boy Color as a gift at a meet and greet, and I just started playing it. Uh, they gave me their game halfway through or two, and the girl was like, "This is mine." Um, you know, I haven't played in you know a decade. I don't even remember where I am in the game, and so I just started playing it. Um, right now, I had, it's pretty early in the game. I'm like, uh, I just got the first badge, and all I have is like a Butterfree and a Pikachu. So it's not good. Did she give you the, the does it run on batteries? Or it runs it run? on AA batteries. Oh, okay, I was gonna say, is she gonna go, oh, here's the charger as well, but she actually runs on batteries. It's AA batteries. And oh, then um, old school. there's something very old school about it. When you turn on a Game Boy Color, there's a little sound that goes like, ba ding. Yes, there is. I and, remember that noise. And I leave it on my, uh, my um, at my house, I leave it on my uh, coffee table. Whenever people come over and turn it on, that little sound happens and they're like, <gasps> I'm 10 again. The sound, yeah. yeah the sound, yeah. I it's love cool. that. No, it's really good. I'm mean, 10 again, hey, you know I like that. Yeah, that, exactly. Particularly online, yeah. which is strange. Well, you know what adults want? They want to feel like kids. Yeah. That's why people like drag, because it makes them feel like children. It's like magic and suspension of disbelief. Mm -hmm. Do you get, would you get completely lost when you are full Trixie? Do you get completely lost in the kind of like the, in the moment as well? Uh, you, do you think you can do things as Trixie that you wouldn't do in naturally walking down the street otherwise? Uh, sometimes I say things because I get very confident and then I say things later on that I'm like, what? Like on the YouTube series with Katya, I think I recently talked about being able to suck my own dick. Wow. And didn't Prince do that? Like remove a rib? Was that a, was that a rumor? Did he remove a rib? And how come when he does it, it's cool? When I do it, it's gross. No, I'm I'm saying you're in this. I'm putting you in the same the same cool category as Prince right now. Oh, so you're. I was like Prince Harry sucks his own dick. Anyway, <laughs> um, no, I just uh, talked about that, and then I'll go back and I remember my boyfriend and I were watching the new episode, and I, there's a part where I talk about Katya goes like, "Well, who sucks their own dick?" And I just absentmindedly said, "I do" or something. And my boyfriend just goes, you, "Really." <laughs> and I like felt his eyes on my face and I was like, what? <laughs> but I just get, you know, just go whatever. I'll say whatever. I don't care. And this is your show. If I did this correctly. Uh, uh, yes. We're filming season five right now. Oh, wow. One of the most, uh, well, probably the most popular drag queen series on YouTube. I would say it definitely is. Yeah. yeah it really is. We love it. It's yeah. wild. It's crazy. It's an amazing, you know, watching, watching multiple episodes, like the, the, the way it's edited, the way it looks, it is just so good. Like it is, it is, it, it's really is mind blowing. Yeah. We're on like episode, what, one oh, I think there's been 109 maybe now, plus 12 episodes of television. So whatever that means. 
That's was a it, lot of episodes. Was it very different making the TV series as opposed to the web series? Is there a big difference in the kind of the production and, and scale of things or? Yes, there was a lot of unforeseen challenges at that time, uh, which you can see in my documentary, Tricks, uh, Tricks Metal Moving Parts. Mm -hmm. But as um, there's a lot of, uh, making TV is different. It's fuller days, longer Plus we were making 30 minute TV segments. So we'd spend a whole day in one look doing one topic. Whereas for YouTube, we do about three or four topics a day and we change looks three or four times. Mm -hmm. So where did where did the mm, we just made it up made it up the first episode is us trying to decide what the show is called and that's what we came up with and I remember back at the time World of Wonder was like you can't call it that because that's not a word and like two weeks in the views were so big I was like really because it has more views than Untucked so I bet maybe it's we should talk about the name of your shows yeah yeah exactly it's, 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 you, you don't forget it and everyone loves doing the, I love doing the little motion yeah it? people love it or the I love when I'm on like a yeah, like a normal show where someone doesn't really watch it and they're like. And your YouTube series, Un. No, I call it that. <laughs> Un. Yeah. Have you seen my Larry King interview? Uh, I've heard that he didn't really know what he was talking about. Is that correct? Um, it was really fun. He did ask me three times if I was trans, which I thought was a few times many. Three times? He actually times. asked me enough times that I was like, am I? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, you can really convince me into anything. I'm like, <laughs> but you know, it's somebody that's a whole different generation. He's eighty four. Yeah, he's eighty four year old men asking an old geezer. asking your pronouns is progress. Yeah, but um, so, hey, everyone Larry was Larry King as well. Is Larry King? It's Larry. He was so nice, yeah, and so he couldn't have been more. By the way, he uses no teleprompter Just, and no notes. He looked right at the camera. And they said go, and he like listed my whole resume from memory. Was he wearing braces? Uh, on his legs. For sure. No. Um, no, he was in like his Larry King outfit. He was in like the little <laughs> sneakers and skinny jeans and he kind of sat like this and he was very nice. And I remember my assistant at the time had green hair and he looked at him and goes, your hair's green. <laughs> like, yes, it is. And I was just trying to relate to him. And there was a part where I was like, anyway, um, you know, uh, Ru I was like, RuPaul teaches us, you know, don't eat the corn, you know, plant the corn and grow it. And there was like a long silence. And I go, do you like corn? <laughs> and Larry goes, Yeah. <laughs> On the cob. Yeah. <laughs> i got to watch this back. It sounds, it sounds oh, awesome. Katya called me the next morning and goes, do you like corn? No. <laughs> Are you, I mean, your, your Drag Race co-stars that you've, you've worked with in the past, you, do you kind of regularly keep in contact with all, the, with all these guys? Like, do you, I try not to. Yeah, because once you get on my level, you know, the phone, you change your number. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, does, does a lot of the girls, I, I'm, I'm close with a few of them. Katya, Kim. You know, like a few that I've been friends with for a long time. Bob, we're really close with Bob. Um, Bob actually helped me make these lashes last night in a in a drama. Um, they they are spectacular. I love Monet, but we all travel. I travel alone. I don't. I travel. My tours are by myself, so I don't see a lot of them. I see them at DragCon in passing. Yeah. And do you? I mean, you saw the Drag Race actually launched in the UK last night as well. Last night. Last night we had like oh we had um. I want to say I think we had like Graham Norton's one of the judges. Yes, is is Baby Spice one of the judges? Maybe I don't know if that's. I a wish thing. you you met her, right? I sure did. She was a judge on All Stars. Oh my! And God. they were like, "Your judge tomorrow is Emma Bunton," and I just like fell out. And I was standing there in front of Emma Bunton. I was like, "I just have to say, I spent most most of my youth pretending to be you, and uh, now most of my adulthood." <laughs> And she was like, your boots have girl power. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to I'm gonna kill myself. Was that like one of the big, best moments of your life? Of you course. Like, yeah, gosh, yeah. I, I was, loved the Spice Girls. I was a Jerry fan. I loved I loved Ginger Spice. It, it was very, remember being young? Very people sexy. People were very, you couldn't like more than one. Yeah, you always your one, one. Yeah, it was always know? one favorite, wasn't there? Yeah. It was that str quite strange, that. But you know, they were all different. And um, th you liked people for different reasons. I mean, Mel C kind of had like the voice you think of. I hope she got paid more. She sings half those songs by herself. Like, does, does Victoria Beckham, does she sing on a song? I don't, I don't know if she does, but... I think she models. Because okay, when you watch, like, the reunion and... stuff, she kind of models. Yeah, yeah Which is fine, model. whatever. Yeah, so Listen, so... I work with drag queens. Yeah. I work with people who try to sing and shouldn't. So, <laughs> I'm not here to... I'm not here to force people to sing. I mean, is, it, is she... Is is Emma the only one you've met? Have you met other Spice Girls, too? I also met Mel B. She was on season seven. Okay. And she has that, like, Wales accent. Is it uh, right? She's actually Wales? from, I think, from Sheffield, is she? Or Leeds? Lee, she's from she's from Leeds, and there was so that's uh, the other side of the country, but it's close. I remember Violet had this outfit that was like um, a beard and a dress, and I remember Melby was like, "They're just ugly. <laughs> your beard and your dress, they're just ugly." And I was like, <laughs> "She's from Scotland." Well, whatever. <laughs> it's good, you my know. But it was sucks. You're doing a lot better than I it do. It does. It, my, no, my, well, my my kind of my local. Can like, you do like an American? Um. um Hey there, what's going on? My name's Adam, and it's uh, welcome to the Savage Situation. 
Is that suck? Was that, <laughs> that, was that, was that good? It's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. It's a little, <laughs> um, uh, you might see a speech pathologist okay. for some cognitive therapy. I, 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 need, some, yeah, I need some help there. I, I got like, got like, um, I got like a... Hey, what's going on, man? Yeah, people always think we're surfers. People hey, are like, hey, man. Hey, what's going on? What's going on, man? People want to get a, want to go surf? I don't know. I can't really <laughs> say. People, don't, go say, surfing? people don't say cowabunga anymore, do That's not a thing. Did no. anyone ever say cowabunga? Is that a thing that I just learned from the turtles and thought that's. that's the turtles. Yeah, radical. That, that's a thing. I don't know. People so. here do that crazy thing with the R. Like, people are like, Bianca. Bianca Del Rio. It's like, Be- that's not her name. You say Bianca. They put an R on everything. The, the name that does, does, does my head in is. We say Craig and you say Craig. I don't know why you say Craig for the name. It's Craig. Craig to the big brother room. And Scott, yeah, that's, that's per- that was actually perfect. <laughs> I like that. That's, that is that is absolute gold. Big brother right is wild. That was really good. Yeah, big brother is a wild. I mean, you would be so good. They need to do. Michelle, they need to do big naked and afraid brother. Big naked and afraid brother. Okay, where people are naked and there's cameras all the time and they're afraid when they're naked of Wouldn't being be? naked. Yeah, I would be very afraid. Yeah. Um, and there's Big Brother, but everyone's naked. Yeah. It'd be okay. like, Shelby, bring your naked tits <laughs> <laughs> to the interview room. Shelby, bring your naked tits to the interview room. <laughs> <laughs> At last oh, I, I was here. I love that. You know, I tour almost every spring. Like, I toured Skinny Legend last spring, and then I'm bringing Grown Up to Europe this spring. Yeah. And when I'm in the, K- the UK, usually the girls will introduce me. Like, last year I toured with Victoria's Secret and Blair... Um, from Manchester, and they would introduce me to things from TV. And last year, I learned about Naked and Afraid. Naked and Afraid. And y'all bitches are wildin'. What? Y'all, y'all bitches are wildin'. Yeah, like acting crazy. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Naked yeah. and Afraid. But you know what though? Naked and Afraid is grinder. Yeah, yeah. This just uh, yeah. It, I remember when Naked and Afraid was called <laughs> grinder. <laughs> You, we were saying earlier on, you, you love some of the TV shows here in the UK as well. You saw Naked Attraction, right? You saw that. Recently? Oh, that's what I meant. Naked Attraction. Yeah, is na- crazy. Na- Naked Attraction. Yeah. That is cra- that's grinder. It, it, well, yeah, I guess it's a it people's is. choice award of like send your face pic, uh, or, or you know sometimes like I love your torso, oh yeah. I like your dick, and then the face will get sent blocked. Yeah, you know what I mean. Or Just or the, the other way, face first. Yeah, and then because you know people work magic. Mm-hmm. People work magic. The pictures. If you're an eight, send a six and be surprised. Have be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, I, I hear you. Don't oversell. No, I do love if that show. If you're a great, if you're a Maybelline Great Lash. Mm-hmm. Don't pretend to be a tart lights camera lashes. That's yeah. a makeup thing. But yeah. you know. I think the the weird thing about that show as well is I think I think families do watch that together, which is a really strange thing. It's a really strange concept, isn't it? Family sat down to watch Naked Attraction. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah. That definitely happens. It's England. I love when they're just like I love when it's some girl like, mm, he's got like skinny legs and a little dick. I love it. <laughs> they're so mean. <laughs> They try and be really nice sometimes, and try and be like, "Oh, I didn't." You know, clearly someone is is not not the 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 bright. The, the, she may have fallen from the ugly tree and hit many branches on the way down. They go, "Oh, yeah, I just your personality just wasn't really there for me." It's you're like lying, you're yeah. you're clearly lying. You, you're yeah, lying. You're, yeah, they're, they're, it's ugly obvious. people. Personality is all they have. Exactly. You think the beautiful people are really bringing the like the pizzazz to the party? Yeah, exactly. It's just that's why drag queens are an anomaly. We're disgusting under this. So we have great not. personalities, but then in drag we get we have both. Yeah, know? are there are there a lot of drag drag queens that you kind of admire as well? Do you kind of you know kind of watch no. and think you're great, or you kind of like I'm Trixie Mattel? And oh, I do guys... like a lot of drag queens. Yeah. I like a lot of drag queens. I like to go to the drag shows. I just last week went in LA to see Sherry Vine and Jackie Beat, two icons in America. Mm-hmm. Um, who else did I see? Um, I just saw uh, Fina Barbatal. I just saw. I have some favorites. Tammy Brown is kind of my favorite. Yeah, she's wacko. You would love her. I would love her. Yeah, she's um she very much marches to the beat of her own drum. I like anybody who makes bold choices. Yeah, absolutely. Have, have a unique look, unique act, and you know, like do your own thing. I think drag now because of TV and stuff, um, people are influenced by Drag Race, so they start doing drag to be on Drag Race. So then, like art arts wise, it's a it's a snake eating its own tail. Have, have You're you... imitating drag queens from TV, and then you go on TV, and then other people imitate you. It's yeah. Like, inception of personal style or lack thereof do you find people who cosplay or, or kind of or or try and become Trixie Mattel and come meet you does that is that is that kind of do you find that kind of a bit like what are you doing or do you find that kind of like oh that's actually quite a sweet it's gesture. very sweet yeah it's um imitation is the you know the sincerest form of flattery mm-hmm, although indeed. sometimes the makeup skills maybe is not not quite there and do you give them, off do you the say beat? that looks 
terrible. Do I don't that say that. Okay. The technique is sometimes a little off the beaten path, and I'm like, they're like, I'm you, and I'm like, you're not, you know. But <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah. But I have a tutorial coming out next week. Uh, so many people go as me for Halloween this year. I created. Um, a YouTube tutorial of me doing my makeup using only products from like the um, pharmacy drugstore. The pharmacy dr from the drugstore. Cheap makeup. So I did this whole look with cheap makeup on YouTube. So you'll be able to watch it next week. It comes out. Wow. So if people going as me for Halloween who are like, well, how do I get a cheap makeup kit, you know, to do this makeup if I'm only going to do it once? So I used like the cheapest products I could find. And I started out very cocky. I was like, you know what? Um, you know, makeup products, whatever. It's the technique that matters. Yeah. And then two seconds into using those like cheap products, I was like, I don't know, you this guys. I don't know. <laughs> and then the wear. I mean, I went to a show that night, and the wear is what matters. The expensive products wear better. Yeah. Over time. I, I mean, I've had this on since yesterday. I mean that that that. I mean, Trixie Cosmetics as well. I'm sure. Are you gonna? Are you, do you think you'll always wear? Trixie Cosmetics as well. Is that going to be a, a big I thing always work it in. Like yeah. today, I don't think I have anything on. I had to give my eyes a little break from the glitter. Um, my glitters are super comfortable to wear, but I wear glitter like seven days a week. So it's yeah. some days I need to pick my battles. Um, but they're, I mean, I like higher price point cosmetics tend to be, cosmetics are the perfect example of sometimes cheap products are great. And sometimes expensive products are not that great. Yeah. You really just have to try it. Yeah. I don't care about the price. I care about the quality does it do what it says it's going to do yeah quality is definitely key absolutely, absolutely. I've, I've been using the same eyeliner for like five years it's a black eyeliner from nyx and it's five dollars wow five bucks five bucks wow and i've used expensive liners and it's not that different so yeah stick to what you know and what you like yeah absolutely you're touring as well in the uk is it next year are you back here are you doing a whole of the europe next year you know like a kind of different i think it's that you're in finland and you're in madrid and i think it starts in april through to june is that right it's like april through june i'm yeah. doing not just my uk tour like normal i'm adding cities like paris madrid um all over i think i'm doing helsinki oslo isn't um, that amazing it's to travel the world and just ha have fun at the same time and do all this it's, yeah it's, it's a great. new show so it's um, my my previous shows were stand up and I play my guitar. The new shows more, bigger, more. I mean, the number of costume changes I'm doing is is crazy. And you have a band as well. Is I'm that, traveling with a band for the oh first time. My, a mean, real that's, band. That's that's, that's big because you you say you're you're so used to traveling on your own. Suddenly you have like a a group of people that you're leading. Yeah. Well, you know, this year after my stand up special came out, Skinny Legend, I'm like, well, next year, how do I like up the ante? Now that everyone's seen me play my guitar alone and tell jokes, how do we like, how can we do, how can we add 20 wig changes, 20 costume changes and band members and set pieces and new videos? Try to do the most. Yeah. This is a very competitive industry. It is. I want to see the musical, the, Tri the Trixie Mattel musical in the West End at some stage. That's 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 the big one for me. Mm. I'm, I'm, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. It could happen. And I want to see the it Trixie Mattel video game. Imagine the like Les Mis poster, Les Miserables, but it just says, it's you me. Like a, you have like a crying says, child. Yeah, and it says, I'm miserable. <laughs> I I mean, that would sell out immediately. Yeah. Or maybe like the color the color pink. Yeah. Instead of the color purple. Yeah, that's, that'd be nice. Or what else? Um, you, I mean, I said a video game as well would be great. I mean, what would that look like as well, the Trixie Mattel video game? Would you be like a, like a Tomb Raider-y kind of Lara Croft figure? I'm like currently just... in a game called Bible Girls Big Apple. Trixie Mattel is like a non-playable character in that. Okay. Um, so I'm in that. But I think it would be a, it would be fun to have a game <clears throat> sort of like, I don't like, do you remember the Spice Girl game for PlayStation? I, I remember it. I, di I didn't play it. But I don't know. What, 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 was it like a dart? Like it wasn't a great game. game. Okay. It was like you put clothes on them and you make up a dance for them to oh do. Oh my god, I do. And then remember, you watch it happen. Game. I do <laughs> just watch them. Go, and no yeah. one wins. There's no points. Um probably something like that. Just dress it wouldn't be a Trixie Mattel game if no one wins. So so <laughs> so yeah. everyone's a loser. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> so you have them just basically dress up and uh, you know in different outfits and then just perform like like Yellow Cloud, your new song as well. Yeah, I could uh, play yeah. that. Yeah. Or maybe um have you played LA Noir? Yes. Okay, that game is like almost entirely based on conversation and like um they tracked these actors' faces so that you have to tell if they're lying. I find it so hard. But it'd be a game like that and me with all my exes. And it'd be you trying to see who's lying. You sit opposite from ex exes and just kind of going, Yeah. You are you're a Yeah. You're, it'd be like yes. it would be like one of my exes being like, He texted me. And then you'd have some prompts to be like, Is he lying or telling the truth? You know. That would be that's they're always good, lying. That's the kicker. It could be a great DLC for the game. LA Noir, Trixie Mattel. LA Pink. LA Pink. Tracy Martell. 
Yes. Oh my, that's fantastic. I'd love to see that. Yeah. If you're a game developer watching this. And if anybody wants me in your game, I've always wanted to do voice acting in a game. I don't care what it is. I've been so vocal about my favorite games. Whatever you think I'd be right for, I'll do it. You just choose one game, best game of all time. What is it? Oh my God. It's the hardest question, isn't it? Because everyone always says, I, I have no idea what that could be. I have to say the Bioshock franchise, the three, is okay. my favorite. My favorite. Although, I've played every Resident Evil game to date, too, and I love those. They're so good, aren't they? They're very good. I do and they're hard. It. They are really hard. The original ones, I think, are better, though, because you can kind of be more more puzzle-based. The ones now are a bit more kind of shooty-shooty, bang-bang. Yeah, you're right. They're it was different. more survivable for. I will say most people's favorite game, it seems like, is uh, Legend of Zelda. Like um, Ocarina of Time is most people's favorite game, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. It is. A, I guess like a, it's a classic. And Goldeneye. Everyone says Goldeneye. Everyone, for 64? Yeah. Everyone loves that game. Like everyone, you Do you didn't... remember how stupid, remember the graphics? Remember how stupid it would be like um, USSR Russian soldiers yeah. shooting you? <laughs> but there was such a blocky face that their head would just be kind of like bobbing around while they were shooting you. Yeah, it was just the worst. Yeah. And everyone would fall through, through the floors and through walls. It was, it just, was fun to play like with glitchy. your friends though, the four-way split screen and trying yeah. to kill each other. And the rumble controllers. Oh, Murder's fun. Murder's, yeah. I'll get some tear, we get some teardrops and, <laughs> and go around town. And yes. Yeah, one knows that. Um, I wish you the best of luck with your future. It's been so good to have you here. and to I see wish you the best of luck with uh, um, your diagnosis. And Thank you. I hope everything goes well with that. We I know you have about 30% we we chance that. of living. So. We, we said we weren't going to mention that. Sorry. It's fine. fine. Um, but it's uh, no, you've got so much good stuff coming your way. You know, album, The third album's in the works. You've got Tri Trixie Cosmetics. You've got a tour. You've got so much more. I mean, your series with Katya and things. I, I wish you the best. And thank you for being here. I never know when to stop. Next year, I'll own Sony and I'll pop down and say hi. Please do. And do make sure to relax as well. Okay. You need some time just to, just to kind of have a bit Everybody of... Everybody keeps saying oh, that. No. You just relax. You know who relaxes? People who are unemployed. That is true. Floridians. 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 Oh. That's who relaxes. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Trixie. Sure. Lovely having you here.